Same old story. Me and Matt's back in the blind after this buck and dapping bird is still after some pigs and some leaners. I mean, we're sitting in this blind, all right, like our son do not shoot anything but that deer. If you met, if you change anything over there, he's gonna be gone for three or four or five days. And I said, Matt, yeah, you got to be kidding me. I mean, we got some jumbo pigs standing right in front of us. Low fence Mexico, archery, right there they are. And I cannot pinch because if we shoot one of the pigs, there's no way this buck's coming in. So I text Herschel, you know, it's pushing 10 o'clock. I'm like, what you think? He said, give him a little bit more time. He's late sometimes. Of course, he's got the covert camera and he knows. I've got my backpack and I'm moving it kind of into position, you know, kind of thinking, Herschel will be here in 15 or 20 minutes. And I, I look over, I say, Matt, right there. Look at the blind, look at the feed pen, look at the deer, the other deer out there. He's just standing there looking, waiting for anything to be out of place. He comes in to a certain point where he can see and smell everything. I don't know if he's waiting to catch something with his eyes. He's waiting for the wind to swirl. Just the, the way the deer's acting, he's just waiting till something's wrong and he has an excuse to get out of there. I think that deer does that every time he comes in. Amazing. That's why I want to kill him. Buck up this morning. He likes to, even though the wind's like this, he likes to come right to the back of that pen. There's a road that goes out the back of Sendero. He likes to come right there and stand. He was there before we even had camera light. I could just see his rack through this tree right here. So what all we're gonna do is move that blind back six feet and turn the window so we can shoot right back there. And then we're not gonna corn here. We're gonna corn back there. That's what we're gonna do. He got that cut out pretty good. We get the blind set back here and it's gonna be a 30 yard shot probably. He's smart, man, he's smart. We get back in the blind in the morning. Those other two young bucks come in. They're feeding around. Look over to my left. There Pumpkinhead is. He's standing over there in the same spot again and multiple choice what he's doing. Gawking, waiting to see what's going on or what he can smell. Just starting to chat my ass. Well, this deer like came in, then he leaves, then he comes back in, then he leaves again, but then he's looking down the road. So, well, the way we're looking at him, way he's looking straight down is another sendero, another road that goes from that feed pen to our left. And I ain't, I don't think he walks up that road. I think he comes out of that corner. They saw something down there. I don't know if there was another buck down there chasing a doe. I don't know what was going on. But that deer, the big buck left and then the two little bucks went right behind him. You just sometimes you just sat back there and watched the festivities unfold. Any chance that we had that our deer was gonna come back was wrecked when we had some cows come in and they just basically took over the whole situation. You know, anytime you're at a place like that, I mean, there are not a lot of cows on this place. I'm not even sure there's supposed to be any cows on this place. I don't even know where they come from. They are uh, wrecking Herschel spots and uh, whew, it is not gonna, I would not wanna be a cow on that range. So I went back over there one more morning, just hoping maybe this deer would just meander in. I walked over there and put a little bit of monster mail out, kind of be where the deer had been coming to. So if he looked that way, he sees that, and he's like, okay, I can be right here and just like step one body length and get a bite, and if he'd done that, he'd be quartering away. Sounds like a hell of a plan, but a big fat goose egg, zero. I have no idea if the deer died of old age or what happened, he did not come in. We got the cheeks busted. So Dap and Bird go get in the blind. They're taking the 6'5 over there and uh, they got a leaner, about eight yards. Seems like a proper distance for a rifle shot. 
Whoa! Just blowed the hair off of it. Gave him that wire. He didn't like it. And I'm like, yeah, well, I hear him over there shooting. I'm like, I told Matt, like, it sucks. Uh, it's coming on 9 o'clock, and uh, we're SOL. The buck ain't coming. His ass is mine next year. I'm going to tell Keith that I will be taking the first hunt of the year, and I'm hunting nowhere but that one spot. I might take a damn sleeping bag and not even get out of the blind, but I'm putting an arrow in this deer if he is alive. I don't even care this year if he loses one side of his rack. It ain't about that. I got a line drawed in the sand, and I'm going to shoot his ass. That's what's going to happen.